In this video, we will take a look at this risk measure called the expected shortfall using a very simple solved example. On this channel, we also have a video focused on the expected shortfall in which we took a more conceptual approach towards understanding what the expected shortfall is and how it compares with value at risk var. The link for that video is given to you in the description below. As far as this video is concerned, let's take up a very simple example. Let's assume that we have a loss which is a discrete random variable. Our loss can take one of four possible values 0 million, 1 million, 2 million and 3 million respectively with probabilities of 44%, 38%, 14.5% and 3.5%. So, what I am given is my loss distribution. Let's say the task at hand is to calculate the expected shortfall at a chosen level of confidence of 95%. So, what I'll be doing is that I will be calculating this expected shortfall using three different approaches. And we will convince ourselves that eventually these three different approaches lead us to the same answer. Let's begin with the first of these. In this approach, I'll be using this formula. Essentially, I'll be defining my expected shortfall to be a conditional expectation. It will be the expected value of the loss given the loss is greater than var. This var is calculated at the same level of confidence as the expected shortfall we are trying to calculate. Okay, So, as per this formula, I should be interpreting my expected shortfall to be a probability weighted average because it's a conditional expectation that we are talking about and this is a probability weighted average of tail losses. So, I'll be only focusing on those losses which are sitting in the right tail. Okay, losses which are greater than the var. Now, to get this formula working, first comes first, we have to calculate var and that too at a level of confidence of 95%. Since we are working with a loss distribution, var would simply be equal to the quantile read from this distribution corresponding to a probability level of 0.95. To read this quantile, let's do this. Let's quickly tabulate the CDF, the cumulative distribution function for our loss. And this is what the CDF would look like for loss levels of 0, 1, 2 and 3 million. For 0, it's essentially the same as this probability, 0.44. For 1, it will be 0.44 plus 0.38, which is 0.82. For 2 million, it will be 0.44 plus 0.38 plus 0.145, which gives me 0.965 and so on. Quickly recall, how do you read a given quantile? I mean a quantile corresponding to a given probability. Essentially, think of this quantile to be the smallest loss for which the CDF either exactly equals the given probability or first exceeds this given probability. So here are my CDF values. Well, there is no loss for which the CDF exactly equals 0.95. But what I do observe is that for a loss of 2 million, it's the first instance when the CDF exceeds 0.95. So this is my Q corresponding to 0.95 and therefore var is equal to 2 million. Okay. Now, coming back to this formula for the expected shortfall. For this formula, I will need to focus on those losses which are sitting in the right tail. Given my loss distribution, where does the right tail start? I have a 3.5% probability mass sitting at this loss of 3 million. In total, my tail should have a probability mass of 5% because that's my level of significance. 
So if 3.5% is sitting here, let's start at this point and walk down a distance of 1.5%. Okay, so this is where my tail starts. So my tail, it contains some portion of this loss of 2 million and it contains this loss of 3 million. So I'll be calculating my ES to be the probability weighted average of these two losses, 2 million and 3 million. Okay, so this is how my ES calculation would look like. 2 million times a weight which should be the interpreted as the conditional probability of realizing this 2 million given I am you know given I know that I am sitting in the right tail. So that conditional probability would work out to this guy which is 1.5% divided by the probability of this event happening which is equal to the level of significance and that's 5%. Okay plus 3 million times the probability in this case will be this guy which is 3.5% divided by again the level of significance which is 5%. So if you were to do this calculation you get the expected shortfall to be 2.7 million a number which is greater than our VAR of 2 million. Okay next let's now move on to approach number 2. In this approach, I will be calculating the expected shortfall as a simple average of tail VARs, okay? not a probability weighted average as I had in the case of losses, but a simple average. Okay? So in this average, how many tail VARs would we be working with? That depends on the number of slices in which you divide your right tail into okay so we would want to divide our right tail into many many slices each of these slices should have an equal probability we will take the var corresponding to each of these slices and we will take a simple average of those vars that should give us our expected shortfall for this approach to work out well enough, you need to choose as many number of slices as computationally possible. Okay, so this is my CDF table. Let's begin with n is equal to 5. Okay, so let's begin with 5 slices of our right tail, each of which have an equal probability. Remember, our right tail has a probability mass of 5%. If I am dividing my right tail into 5 slices, each slice will have a probability mass of 1%. My formula for calculating the expected shortfall would come out to be something like this. This is the var corresponding to the first slice. It's a var corresponding to a chosen level of confidence of 96%. This is the VAR for my second slice, VAR corresponding to a chosen level of 97%, all the way till the fifth slice for which I will be computing a VAR corresponding to a confidence level of 100%. Now please note, this I will be able to do for this simple case where my loss is bounded. Please don't try and compute this quantile when your loss, let's say, follows a normal distribution. Please note that because I have 5 terms in my numerator, in the denominator, I am dividing by 5. Just in case you are working with a distribution in which Q corresponding to 100% confidence is not possible, it is not even defined, then for that particular case, please only include 4 terms in this case in your numerator and the number 4 in your denominator. Okay? Again, use the same method to locate your quantiles as we did in the previous case when we calculated the VAR, convince yourself that the quantile corresponding to 0.96 is again 2 million, the quantile corresponding to 0.97 is 3 million, 98, 3 million all the way till 100% is also 3 million. Okay, so expected shortfall is 2 plus 3 times 4 divided by 5 that gives you 2.8 million. Now, in the previous approach, we had got 2.7 million. So, this approach is giving us a number which is close enough 
but not exactly equal to what we got in the previous approach. The problem here is that we didn't choose this n to be big enough. I told you bigger the n, more the number of slices that you work with, better is your calculation of the expected shortfall. Let's try out the same type of calculation but this time working with n is equal to 10 slices each of equal probability. In this case each slice will have a probability of 0.5 percent. Okay now in this case expected shortfall will be the simple average of 10 vars. Convince yourself that for the first slice, we will be working with Q corresponding to 0.955, right? 0.95 plus the probability of 0.5%, so 0.955. The VAR corresponding to 0.955 will be 2 million. The VAR corresponding to 0.96 will be 2 million. 0.965 will again be 2 million. So there will be three VARs each of 2 million and the remaining 7 vars will be each of 3 million. Okay, So in this simple average 2 times 3 plus 3 times 7 the whole thing divided by 10 gives me an expected shortfall of 2.7 million which is exactly equal to the number which we got from approach 1. Okay, Next approach number 3. So in this approach we will be computing expected shortfall as the weighted average of many many quantiles and this is how my formula would look like okay now this is my weighting function these are my quantiles q corresponding to any given probability p and using this integral i am computing a weighted average of my quantiles the weights which i use in the case of expected shortfall look something like this 1 over alpha where alpha is my level of significance for any chosen probability which is strictly greater than the level of confidence. That means if I am working with a quantile which is sitting in the right tail, the weight that I will be using for that quantile is 1 over alpha. For a quantile which is sitting in the body, that means p less than or equal to c, I will be using a weight of 0. Okay, so using this definition of weights and inserting this definition into this integral gives me expected shortfall to be equal to 1 over alpha times the integral which now runs not from 0 as the lower limit but from c as the lower limit going all the way till 1 of qp dp. Okay, so to compute expected shortfall using this formula all you have to do is you have to quickly recall how to interpret this integral. Essentially it's the area underneath this function quantile as a function of p evaluated between a lower limit of p is equal to c my level of confidence and upper limit of 1. Okay, so to get this integral which I have just now interpreted to be an area, I would need to you know quickly plot q as a function of p, quantile as a function of chosen probability. This is my CDF table. If p lies between 0 and 0.44, my quantile would come out to be 0. If P lies between 0.44 and 0.82, my quantile comes out to be 1. If P lies between 0.82 and 0.965, my quantile comes out to be 2. And if P lies between 0.965 and 1, my quantile comes out to be 3. Okay, so this is how the plot of QP would look like with respect to P. Okay, so on the x-axis, this is 0.44, this is 0.82, this is 0.965 and this is the number 1. Okay, now this guy, this point on the x-axis corresponds to 0 0.95, my level of confidence. So all I need to do is, I need to only focus on this portion of this plot because for this portion one to the left of 0 
I am using a weight of 0. Okay, so I need to find out this area. Let the area of this strip be A1. Let the area of this strip be A2. Let's calculate the two areas. What is A1? The height of this rectangle is 2 million. The width of this rectangle is 0 0.965 minus 0 0.95. Okay, so this gives me A1 to be 0 0.03. What is A2? The height is 3 million. That times, what is the width? 1 minus 0 0.965. Okay, so that gives me A2 to be 0 0.105. The total area, 0 0.03 plus 0 0.105, that's 0 0.135, divided by the alpha, which is 0 0.05, the level of significance. This gives me again my expected shortfall to be 2.7 million. Okay, so essentially what we have done in this video is that we have actually taken three different approaches to calculate the expected shortfall for this very simple problem. One in which my loss is a discrete random variable that can take one of four possible values. We have convinced ourselves that the three approaches eventually give us the same result.